doggies? That's what he got. This is the cards. I needed extra storage, so I might put this by my desk area. I'll show you guys how that looks like in a little bit. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is Friday. I've been home back from vacation. If you guys haven't seen my previous vlogs, Please watch those. I took a little trip to Taeyeon and I stayed at some pensions for the weekend. And now I'm just back at home. The weather has been very rainy in Korea. If you guys haven't seen the news, Korea had like the worst rainfall that it's had in years. So a lot of places in Seoul actually got flooded like Gangnam and subway stations. Luckily in my area, it wasn't too bad, so I didn't have to deal with any of that, but just mostly been at home because of the rain and this weekend probably will just go grocery shopping. Nothing much, but yeah, I'm just at home as usual with the dogs and I wanted to kind of clarify something about my previous videos. So. I went to two pensions for my vacation and I realized that people who aren't living in Korea, they don't know what a pension is. I was talking to my mom and I was telling her about my pension vacation and she asked me like, what is a pension? And then I've also seen several comments asking me like, what are you calling that place? A pension, what does that mean? So today I wanted to kind of explain that. Since I have lived in Korea since 2015, there are a lot of words I use that are kind of known as Konglish words. So Konglish words, they're a mix of like Korean and English. And it's an English word that Koreans use to describe something. Like for example, um, in America, we would call our phone a cell phone. But in Korea, they call it a smartphone. Another example is like if you have a checking account in America. Usually we have a debit card that goes along with that checking account. But in Korea, they call it a bank card. So there are several kind of English terms that I use and I don't realize they are Konglish. So yeah, pension is one of those terms. Koreans use the word pension to describe um, like a vacation spot. So pension, you can kind of think of it as uh, bed and breakfast, Airbnb, lodging, rental kind of house or room. These pensions are owned by maybe an older Korean couple, but usually these pensions are out kind of in the countryside. There are some that are nearby, but 
there are just so many different types of pensions in Korea. You have your dog pensions, which are called Aegin pensions. These are dog friendly pensions. And then you have like Poo Villa pensions, you have camping pensions. Um, there are just so many different types of pensions in Korea. There are even like glamping pensions. Probably every kind of pension you can think of like Korea has. Even there are like kid themed pensions. So yeah, the pension game in Korea is very strong. And if you want to have like unique experiences, you can go to all of these pensions. When I'm talking about I stayed at a pension, I usually have gone to a dog friendly pension. And the thing to know about Korea is that since Korea is a smaller country and most people live in apartments, most Koreans will have a very small dog. So if you're wanting to go to one of these dog pensions, um, just keep in mind that there is a size limit and there is a number of dogs you can bring. So for me, when I was searching for pensions, I had a really hard time finding a pension that would allow four dogs. Most just allow one or two or maximum three dogs. But luckily, I found two pensions that allowed our four dogs. And the reason I believe they allowed my dogs is because my dogs are very small. At these dog pensions, one dog is free and then you will have to pay an additional like 10,000 won for like extra dogs. Pensions will also have like everything you need. They'll have like a private bathroom, a kitchen, a fridge, like a TV, pretty much your basic you know, amenities that you will need, like Wi-Fi and everything. And when you're staying at the pension, the owners usually are also staying on that property. So they might live in another building, they might live like on the top floor or something. So that's just something to keep in mind. Pensions might also offer some type of barbecue. So you would have to like buy all of the groceries that you want to grill and then they will provide you charcoal. They will charge like 20,000 won or 25,000 won to use charcoal if you are staying for a couple of nights then sometimes you might get a discount or they might give you like a night free like when we stayed at the dog pension recently we got our first night free for using the barbecue but then the next night we had to pay so it really just depends on each pension like how much they're going to charge you so just remember that when you're looking at the prices of the pensions pensions in korea they differ in prices so especially during the peak season it's gonna be like double or triple the amount and if you're wanting to go to a pension for your vacation you should book way way in advance because these places you know are booked up like months in advance especially for the peak season like summer in august i had a very very hard time finding our pension just because my husband didn't know when his vacation would be so we pretty much had to wait like last minute until we could book and that really limited our options of where we can go so yeah that's kind of what you can think of as a pension just like an airbnb kind of bed and breakfast type but they don't really provide you food so just remember that i just wanted to clear that up because some people were very confused and i just like totally forgot that you know pension is a Konglish word. Anyways, I hope you guys understand that and then I will also show you guys how to find pensions on Naver Map or the Naver app. So I'll include that um, right here. If you use the Naver app, you can actually translate it into English so you can read all of their reviews and everything. Just keep in mind that if you're going to a dog pension, you need to contact the owners and ask about your dog. You need to let them know your dog size and how many and verify that they allow your dogs first before you actually book because many owners can be quite strict about the size and weight of your dog. So always double check. Okay guys, so let me show you how to search for pensions. If you want to search for dog pensions, you can type in Aegean pension. If you just want normal pensions, then type in pension. Or if you want pensions for a specific city, you can type it like Busan pension, Daejeon pension, Daegu pension, like that. So once you go onto Naver Map, you can search for the pension and then it'll pop up and you can see all of these pensions here. On the Naver app, you can also see everything in English. If you just click on these three dots at the bottom here and then go over to the next page, you will be able to see the translation button. 
click on that bird to translate Korean to English and then all of the information that you see will be in English. If you do press the little arrows to extend the text, it will go back to Korean. So to fix that, you just have to go back and translate it again. But after that, you will be able to see all of the information in English, the reviews, the blogs will be displayed so you can read all about those pensions. There are also search filters. So use these categories if you want to narrow down your search. You can search by price, distance, different amenities. So use these to help you find the perfect pension. Okay guys, so another thing I wanted to mention is that I do have English subtitles on my videos. I think starting from my vlogs, life in korea vlogs i have added english subtitles to all of my videos so if you guys cannot hear what i'm saying or you don't understand then please click those captions and you will be able to see what i'm saying also a lot of the times in the captions i'm actually explaining something if something doesn't make sense in my video then please check the captions because most of the time i probably explained it also if you click on the description you can see all of the information i usually provide information about my video where i stayed and other types of information so please check that area first before you ask something because most of the time i have already answered it in the description also i'm trying to update all my videos with subtitles from other languages so if you have a language that you want to see subtitles for just comment down below and let me know and i will try to add those languages to my videos. What YouTube kind of does is that I will edit the English subtitles and then you can actually add the languages into your video. It just automatically translates the languages from the English subtitles. So they might not be like 100% accurate, but hopefully they help you guys if you don't quite understand what I'm saying. I think also for my future videos, if I'm editing text into my video, I'll try to put the text maybe like at the top or on the side because I know like when I put my text on the bottom of the video and then you guys are watching with captions, it kind of blocks the text from my video. So I try to be more mindful of that so that you guys will be able to read both the text in my video and the captions. But yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that. Please use captions if you can't hear me. So also the last thing I wanted to talk about today was, I know a lot of people, they ask me in the comments like, where are you living? Where are you located? Where is this apartment? You guys ask a lot about, you know, my location. And I just wanted to let you know, I probably won't answer those kind of comments just because since I am putting myself online, I do still want to protect my privacy and not disclose my exact location. Please do not be offended or hurt if I don't reply to your comment about, you know, where is the store located? You know, where is your apartment? Because I still feel the need to protect my you know location a little bit but if there's some place i go to that's you know far away enough from my home of course i'm gonna have the location in the description again if i haven't put the address or location then it's probably because that place might be near me you know that place might be some place i go to frequently that i don't want to disclose so please understand that and also the last thing i want to say a huge thank you to 3,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, watching my videos. I know my vlogs are, you know, not that fun, but I like to create very peaceful and calming kind of vlogs since my life can be so crazy and hectic with four dogs. When I'm editing, when I'm making these vlogs, it's kind of very healing for me to make something peaceful and calming that, you know, I can enjoy and that can just, you know, relax my mind. So um, I hope you guys enjoy my vlogs. I really enjoy making them. I hope I can be more interesting and show you guys more places. But for now, I'll probably be just at home and probably just be showing my dogs. So um, please support that. And again, thank you guys so much. I'm having some lunch. I just got some kimbap downstairs. This is donkasu kimbap. And then I'm waiting for my ramen. Some ramen. I'm still waiting for it to soak a little more. 
That is my lunch today, just kimbap and ramen. Okay, so I bought some of my Canon photo paper. I haven't used this little photo printer in a long time. I thought I would buy some film and print some of our vacation pictures. These come in little packs like this. I'm going to put them in the camera. Open this. Don't touch it, dogs. No, blue one's supposed to go down. Okay, I'm going to print my picture of the doggies. Let's check this. Okay, here's our picture. It's not the best quality. It really isn't. But I guess the job done. Definitely need to upgrade the printer. But this is an inkless printer. It just uses the like paper technology. I don't know what it does, but you don't need ink. You just need to buy these films and it'll print it for you. <laughs> It's not that good. I don't know. My printer keeps messing up quite a bit. Hi. Hi, baby. Hi, jealous one. Did you party? Did you party? Hi. Why? Did you party? You want attention? You want a hug? You want attention, baby? I love you, I love you, I love you. Go on your party. Goodbye. Yes. Go on your party. Go. Go, go, party. Are you going at the same time? I don't always. Edward, Edward, Edward. Edward, wait for sister. Okay, Edward. On the party, go. On the party. Good job. On the party, on the party. Good boy. <laughs> don't jump off. He always jumps off. <laughs> Wait, finish party first. Okay, hmm? wait, wait there. Wait, let me give you what's your pee pee drip. You did good job. Tarsa. None for you. You gotta eat your kibble. It's dinner time and I haven't had time to go grocery shopping, so we just ordered some Dr. Tang and a little side. This is supposed to be like Pikachu in the picture. It looks better, but yeah, this is what we got. Anyways, gonna have some dinner and then probably just head to bed.